I'm John of Buchanan. Now, if you watch this channel with any regularity, you will know that I'm a fan of this particular instrument. I think retro synth is really good. It's also an excellent synth for learning about different synthesis types. And there's one that we've completely overlooked on the channel so far. And today is the day that will be rectified. Good news for everyone, I think. Now, most of the time that I work with retro synth, I'm in kind of analog mode where we get this kind of familiar styling, this kind of mini Moog style approach to analog synthesis. There's a kind of hard sync version of that as well. And we've also spent some time looking at the FM capabilities of this instrument, a completely different approach to sound creation. But today we're going to look at the table. I don't mean we're going to look at this table. I mean, we're going to look at wavetable synthesis. Now the PPG Wave is probably the most famous wave-based synthesizer, but Korg's WaveStation came along and did amazing things in the late 1980s as well. And the whole concept of wavetable synthesis is that what you can do is to line up or create a wavetable, literally like a list of individual waveforms, and then you can scroll through those, cycle through them, move through them in various ways, so that sounds evolve based on tiny snapshots of digital waves. And within the wavetable option within RetroSynth, we can do some quite interesting things, including making wavetables of our own. But before we get to that, let's just quickly understand what we're actually talking about. So what I've got, as is true all the way through RetroSynth, is two separate oscillators, oscillator one and two. I can balance between them here. And for the purposes of demonstrating wavetable synthesis, I'm just gonna focus on oscillator one and its shape, which is here. So what happens when I play a note is that I have an opportunity to cycle through, using this dial here, the, the individual waves that are assigned to whichever sound is creating that wavetable at the moment. And at the moment, I don't actually know what that is, but we should have a chance to listen to how the sound evolves as I move through the shape dial options. <laughs> So there we are. Okay, what I have a chance to do here is then to choose one of the wavetables. And in fact, within um, RetroSynth, I've got a whole bunch of op uh, options. I wonder if we're currently listening to Digi Insect. It sort of feels like we might be. It turns out we weren't, and it's true, this one sounds even more like an insect. So imagine this like this for a moment, that what you've got is a sound which effectively has almost been kind of sampled, but rather than playing across a substantial looped portion of that sample, instead what you were doing is to focus in on one moment where a sort of sustained version was being created. And if we were to take a sample and take it down to just one cycle, what we would have, of course, really is an oscillator. And that's kind of the best way of thinking about wavetables. But as I say, with the option for this movement. Now, what happens within the table option within RetroSynth is that, as we can see, we've got two separate oscillators. And if, in fact, I drop to the lower oscillator, at the moment, I think this sound is going to sound exactly the same as oscillator one. Oscillator one sounds like this, and oscillator two sounds like this they're the same. And the reason they're the same is because they're currently accessing the same bit of wave shape. In other words, I'm hard left accessing the first of the wavetable options within this sound. But if I want variation, I could move shape two and then blend it with oscillator one. Now, what we almost get is this kind of organy draw bars approach where we can bring two voices in next to each other with different waveforms and we can do some interesting things. But as I've also said, what we can do within um, RetroSynth is to actually introduce sounds of our own. In other words, we can bring in audio samples, which can then be analyzed into wavetables and we can do interesting things with those. So I'm gonna show you that in accordance with the loop browser. I'm going to open the loop browser up here. And what I'm actually going to do is to come to the vocal options, um, which are obviously going to be listed um, uh, alphabetically. So I'm in a position to start with Andre, if I like. Hey, man. Hey, man. 
So here's Andre. Um, so that's good. Um, I don't love that, but let's just see what happens when we use one of these as a means to begin to um, uh, break a sound down. So what I can do directly from the loop browser is to drag this sound across here and drop it right here. But the issue that I then get is that logic tells me it can't actually create a wavetable from this. So it tells me to read the manual, I feel I should put my glasses on, we should go proper old school mode, that to create a wavetable, the audio file must have a constant pitch, several pitched sections separated by silence, or one or more single cell sections. So that told me, didn't it? Wrist appropriately slapped. Hey man. No, no, no. No, no, no. Hey, 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 hey! Right. You and me forever walking. You and me forever walking. That's an odd lyric, isn't it? In many ways, it's kind of like Andre is inviting us to do one of those kind of hundred mile walks across a weekend. Uh, we'll be forever walking. You and me forever walking. <laughs> And that's halfway through day two when everyone's tired. Um, sorry, uh, let's see if we can actually find a sound. <laughs> sorry. Um, see the song that sings forever. Okay, so it feels like there are bits of this that are a little bit more sustained. I might be wrong. We'll obviously get to things that are a bit more sustained, but I'm interested to see where the test can come. No, it's not happy with that either. So let's come and find something which has got a little bit more sustain to it. So here is something a bit more sustained. And sure enough, so now what's happening is that Logic is telling me that a wavetable has been created based on this waveform. Now, to manage your expectations before I press play, remember, RetroSynth in table mode is not a sampler. So we're not about to hear the kind of breathiness of this vocal. Each slice that has been detected and turned into a waveform is now available to us, but they're all going to sound a little bit like oscillators, digital ones at that. I'm going to come back to just oscillator one and we'll see what we've got. Let's blend that with a bit of oscillator two in a slightly different position as well. Now, how might we get movement into a sound like this? Well, remember the wavetable, as we know from moving through the shape options, effectively has all of these bits of waveform lined up, ready to go. So what if we were in a position to kind of cycle through those and make them part of the experience of the sound? Well, we can do that by bringing an LFO sort of into the mix as well. What I'm gonna do is to turn this dial all the way around to bring maximum LFO amounts to the wave shape of this particular sound. Now, the LFO module is down here and by default, it's actually set up to be introduced via the mod wheel. I'm gonna turn that off. I want to hear this effect from the moment I play the note. So as I play a note, what should happen now is that this wave shape should begin to move through the bits of the waveform that have been detected. Slow it down. And if we choose a ramp, That becomes quite beautiful. What we could do actually would be to increase the release time a little bit, make it a bit more like a pad, maybe just slightly soften out the start of the sound as well so it's a bit less abrupt. And what we could also do would of course be to filter the sound a little bit. So what I might do is to just either drop the um, cutoff frequency overall. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is to back down the amount that the envelope affects the filter. So rather than being super bright every time I play a note, we're just having a slightly more restrained version of it. All 
rather nice. What I'm actually going to do is to sync this to um, the speed of my track. And I am going to record this chord progression. And we're going to loop that in a second. I'm just going to quantize it. But what I also might do, I think, is to bring it down the octave. OK, now, as you can see, I've got some other things that I'm going to introduce you to in just a moment as well. Why do I like taking sounds out of the loop browser and putting them into RetroSynth? Well, again, if you watch this channel with any regularity, you will know that I love the idea that sound creation can always start from a different place. And whilst there are a lot of preset waves that you can select and load, you have the same ones that I do, and that's great, but we've got an opportunity to make completely new ones. And what you'll have noticed when we finally found a version of Andre, in fact, we couldn't find a version of Andre, we went for the angelic vocal effects instead. But when you find a sound, Logic will tell you how many waveforms it's actually created out of that wavetable. And sometimes that'll be 11, which I think was right. I'll have to look back through the video, but I think it was 11. Other times you might get 30 waveforms, which means loads of individual snapshots so that the sounds can become ever more complicated. Now, I made another version of a wave earlier on, which actually has got a similar kind of thing going on. What I've got here is a little bit of processing on this sound, but most importantly, I've created a bandpass filter version of this sound, which means that it's focusing on mid frequencies. But again, it's got some LFO movement in it as well. And I've done some extra filtering to it, compressed it, and I've got it moving using tremolo from one side of the mix to the other. It sounds like this. And together, I think they might be quite nice. So this original sound that I've made is quite fruity at the low end. What I'm going to do is just roll a little bit of that out. I, I want it to be a sort of solid foundation, but it really is quite solid at the moment. OK, and let's put that into context in a track more broadly. So what we've got here is a new way of being able to make, particularly, I think, chord-based parts. I do think that's where kind of wavetable synthesis does its best work. But if you want sounds that have got this slightly organy quality, but the potential for some movement, some inner movement, I think it's a really interesting place to go looking and definitely just dragging and dropping in uh, sounds. Remember, they're not going to sound like their originals. They're being detected to create a series of oscillators from tiny little bits of the audio that you import. But nevertheless, every time you do that, you're going to end up with a completely unique result.